so next I'm going to go through a kind of a simple example um, to illustrate a point and then we'll apply that point to portfolio management practices. So let's say that we want to make an investment in Golden Gate Park and we have a, two choices. One is an ice cream stand and the other is an umbrella stand. There's a picture of Golden Gate Park. If you haven't been there, I recommend it. And there's an ice cream stand, umbrella stand, let's say at the entrance to the park right about here. Then we look at, well, what are the rates of return since you guys are master students? We have days here, and these are sample days. And you have, if you have an ice cream, then, and it's rainy, people don't buy ice cream, they rather buy an umbrella. The rate of return on a rainy day is quite different. You lose money in the ice cream stand, but you make money on the umbrella. And notice that it's the same kind of pattern the other way around. If it's sunny day, you make money in ice cream, but you lose money in the umbrella business. It kind of makes sense, right? Let's say that we move to some investment analysis. We've already known how to establish the expected value. Here, each day is, is independent. So we just take the mean or the average of those and we get 20%. We take the average of the umbrella. It's also 20%. And the standard deviation is very large for both of them, 31.6. So one standard deviation is 20% minus 31%, which is a negative 11%, or is 31% positive, so it's a 51% it's a profit. So that's what mean and standard deviation are. So which investment looks better? Take a moment and think about it. Would you rather have an ice cream stand or an umbrella stand? Well, the answer is they're both the same. Right? depending on you know your crystal ball as far as the weather is concerned, each one has the same mean and same standard deviation. And it's pretty risky. You know, you're, you're not really excited about the prospect of maybe making a lot of money, but also maybe losing money. So what can we do about it? What we can do is notice that they kind of counter each other. What if you bought 50% of the ice cream stand and then 50% of the umbrella stand then what would happen? Well, you have 50% of a negative 10, which is a negative five. And then you'd have 50% of a 50%, which is 25%. So half of 50% is 25. 25 minus five is 20. And so you'll notice that the way this is kind of engineered to do is that every single outcome is 20%. It's just that which one made money? If it's rainy, the umbrella carries the day. If it's sunny, then ice cream carries a day, but every single day you make a 20% return. So in this particular case, if you average the returns, you get 20% because every day has identical returns. And what's the standard deviation? What is the amount of variation in this distribution? Answer zero, because every day you make the same amount. So this is a good example where your rate of return is identical to either of the investments and the variation is zero. It's true that you don't have any upside potential, like there's no scenarios where you're making 50%. However, there is also no scenario where you're losing money. So this is a, a very safe investment. Expect a return of 20% with no variation. So this is a, a very simple, obviously, as I said, engineered example to illustrate the power of diversification. Um, I often refer to this as noise canceling, where you have one wave that's up and you cancel it with a low wave. If the wave is down, you cancel it with a high wave. So those two in combination wipe out the noise, right? That's essentially what's going on here. So let's now take a slightly more realistic example. And we have two stocks, Blandy and Gourmange. And these are the rates of return, again, with the sampling of years for the two stocks. And this is the market return for, for the stock in the same time frames. So the task is first, let's, let's graph the two stocks and just look at it. And by looking at it, you'll be able to see things, maybe not statistically computed, but you'll be able to see patterns. Secondly, we'll compute the average rate of return or the mean for the two investment alternatives and then compute the standard deviations for the two alternatives. And then we'll do some so what's, but let's do the math first. So we'll go to two stocks and these are the numbers. The mean here, since each, each event is independent, is equal to average of these numbers. Right. 
and uh, we can copy that over. So we can see that the average for Gourmand is higher than Blandy, and the market is right in the middle at 8%. So let's do the standard deviation equals standard deviation dot sample. This is a sample size because it's 10 years out of longer time span. And then we'll put the numbers and it is 25% and we'll again copy it across. So notice that although Gourmand has a higher mean, it also has a higher variability. And you can kind of see it here, like big swings, you know, 40s, 48s. There's nothing like that over here, 75 even there. The mean for Blandy is lower, but the standard deviation is lower. The mean for Gourmand is higher, but there's a high variation. Again, that's not a big surprise. And then let's do a graph. So if we shade the two stocks and we go to insert and charts and we pick a, let's look at all charts. Let's take a line chart and we can look at this one. So, okay. And so what we have here, you'll notice is the orange represents Gourmand. So it's bouncing around. And then the Blandy is the blue. So notice that, that the, if you had a portfolio of the two of them, in this case, Gourmand went down, or up rather, Blandy went down. In this case, Blandy went up, Gourmand went down. Here, Gourmand goes up, Blandy goes down. So what we see is there's some noise cancellation. It's not perfectly negative correlation like the umbrella and the ice cream stand. But you could see that a portfolio might, might tend to stabilize the rate of return. In terms of our uh, questions, so did we graph it? Yes, and we saw that they're, they, they move, but not in concert. They seem to be a bit of noise cancellation, that the mean is different, and with Gourmand being higher, Blandy being lower, and the variability likewise being higher for Gourmand than Blandy. So which stock is more volatile? That would be Gourmand, as measured by the standard deviation. How do the movements affect the two? And we see that they're not moving in the same direction all the time. Sometimes they do, but there's also many times where one goes down and the other goes up. When you see that kind of pattern, you know that there's a potential for portfolio improvements or diversification effects. Okay, so let's look at how we would do this in terms of Excel and do a portfolio where we have 25% of the risky stock, which is Gourmand, and 75% of Blandy, which is the safer alternative. So when we go to the Excel sheet, here's the rate of return for the two individual stocks. And here we put portfolio, and we'll put in parens um, 75% and 25% risky. 75 slash, okay. And so we'll take the Blandy at point times 0.75 plus the risky times 0.25 and then we'll copy that all the way down and we could compute what is the mean and simply it's a straight average in this case equal probabilities so we add those up or have an average of 7.10 and then we look at the standard deviation equals standard deviation and it is a sample um, parens, and we end up with 22%. So in this particular case, notice that we end up with a higher rate of return than the mean, and we actually have a lower standard deviation. So this is quite an upgrade over the Blandy. As far as the Gourmand, we have, um, this is not quite as obvious as an improvement. Here it improved both, but here we have an improvement in the standard deviation, less variation, and a lower mean. So that's this shows the, the noise canceling effect uh, working here, where we have a lower than either of the two individual stocks. So portfolio risk went down and the expected return is higher than the base. So this is a good scenario. So rate of returns, we got an improvement over the the Blandy, and the variability is lower than, than both of them. So there's a statistical measure that helps us predict the degree to which the two stocks interact to have this effect of noise cancellation. 
And the word or the phrase in statistics is the correlation coefficient. This is the Greek symbol here, and we, would, we pronounce that rho. So rho equals the correlation coefficient between the two returns, in this case, the Blandis versus Gourmange. And so now we can do the statistical measure in Excel. The function that we have is corel, as in correlation coefficient, equals C-O-R-R-E-L, open parens, and it gives you the prompt of the two arrays, the two arrays being what is the rate of return for the first array, comma, what's the rates of return for the second array, close parens, and it's 0.11 as the correlation coefficient. So the result of all this is done for us by Excel, so thank God, it makes it much easier. And so when we look at this guideline, negative one equals perfect negative correlation. In other words, one goes up, the other goes down in the exact same amount. And that was illustrated by the ice cream and umbrella stand example. If it is plus one, it's perfectly correlated, which means one goes up, the other goes up. One goes down, the other goes down. So there's no diversification benefit by mixing the two because they just move together anyway. And so what we see is if it's in between negative one, it should be negative one and plus one, this, this graph right there, it would be risk is reduced, but not eliminated. And so in this case of 0.11, it obviously sits between plus one and minus one, and we have positive correlation effect. So one of the fundamental approaches to portfolio management is as we add more stocks that have some diversification characteristics, we can greatly affect the risk of a portfolio. And so you'll see that if we only had one stock, it's pretty high risk. And then as we keep adding, as we go to the right, we keep adding additional stock, the risk drops and eventually it approaches, but never quite hits the market risk because you're not really having the entire market risk go away. This particular gap between the market risk and the, the risk of the portfolio represents the company specific or the diversifiable risk. And then we're always approaching the market risk itself. All right, conclusions from this section. As we add more stocks to a portfolio, each one has some smaller and smaller risk reducing impact on the entire portfolio. As the standard deviation falls very slowly after about 40 stocks, we see that there are pretty dramatic effects to portfolio risk in the smaller numbers. But after we go about 40, there's not a lot of diversification remaining. So if portfolio managers have well diversified portfolios, we can eliminate about the half, about half the risk of owning a single stock. So it's a beneficial concept, diversification.